Good morning and welcome to the Week Ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Friday the 26th of June and 2020 and the time has just gone 11.01 British Summer Time. And I'm looking ahead to next week, uh, which is Monday the 29th of June until Friday the 3rd of July. Now before we talk about what went on, what's, what's, what to look out for next week, uh, let's have a quick uh, recap of what happened this week. <clears throat> so most recently, Last night, we heard from the Federal Reserve in relation to the stress test of the U.S. banking system, and by and large, uh, it, was, it, it, it said the U.S. banking system was in good shape. It said that, 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 that of the of 34 banks that were tested, uh, it said a few of those known interventions, um, in a very extreme pandemic-type scenario, in a, a few of those came very close to the minimal capital requirements. Uh, on top of that, um, the, the Federal Reserve said um, that, that U.S. banking dividends are going to remain capped. Uh, if they do want to pay a dividend, they're going to have to actually have a formula that, that's connected to its earnings. Uh, and by looking at what's going on in the options market, it would suggest uh, the traders are kind of factoring in, pricing in, uh, that it's, it's likely um, that some of the major banks could cut their dividends. Um, so, that, that, so U.S. equity markets rallied in, up, up to the close last night, um, the positive sentiment spilled over to Asia. Um, even though, even though, even though, even though, even though China, China, China is a holiday, a, 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 a positive start to the European session today. But earlier in the week, um, we had some very, very impressive rebound uh, in manufacturing and service figure, figures. Um, the flash reading of services and manufacturing for France, Germany, the UK, and the US all show decent rebounds. Uh, from from May into June. Uh, in fact, the French figures were, the, were probably the most standout because, um, according to the to the reports, uh, the, the readings for French manufacturing and and services both came in north of 50.0. So it showed that that they're actually in expansion territory, which is incredible when you think about it, uh, because it wasn't that long ago. It was only in April we had record lows across those readings. Um, some of the readings were in the kind of mid to low teens. <coughs> Excuse me. So you uh, saw a continuation of the kind of rebound. Many of the readings uh, were, were kind of in the in the uh, in, in the 40s, so still in negative territory, you know, in uh, in, in contraction territory, but negative growth territory. But there is certainly an improvement on the uh, on the on the readings for May. So the flash readings for, Ju for June were all, were all much higher than then. the final readings for May. That that that, that and that's as as a direct result of the reopening of the economies. But as we also found out this week particularly in the US and a number of other countries, the reopening of economies has had quite a negative impact um, on the on the COVID-19 crisis in terms of a spike in cases. Um, you know, cases like China have increased cases, Germany um, and the US in particular. Um, Dr. Anthony Fauci, who's a specialist in infectious diseases and an advisor to the US government, uh, he described the rate at which um, the COVID-19 crisis Cases are increasing in certain U.S. states as actually um, as actually disturbing. And with that, we saw a very decent sell-off in the middle of the week in terms of the uh, in terms of global stock markets. Um, um, also, what's been kind of going on? It's some states in the U.S. have actually starting to actually pause. You know, Florida and Texas have actually are, have registered such high cases of. COVID-19 cases, they're actually pausing the rate at which they're reopening their economy. Um, so this is something which has kind of been going back and forth. The health crisis is still a major theme that's running through uh, that's running through stock markets. Also, um, there's a bit of a slip of the tongue, or maybe it wasn't. Uh, Peter Navarro, trade advisor to the U.S. government, uh, claimed that the U.S.-China trade deal was off. And President Trump had to kind of confirm that it was intact. So during the week, there was some positive news uh, in that President Trump had to reaffirm that the U.S.-China trade situation was on stable ground. Um, so, but that, that was that, that was been kind of um, lasted in, in the news of about 24 hours. But the real kind of story is we're having scenarios of increased cases of COVID-19 in a number of U.S. states, and then we're seeing things, the fears of things being started actually paused in terms of the reopening of the economy, or in the case of, you know, some U.S. states such as New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut are now stating if you're a visitor, if you've flown in, 
or if you traveled in from some of the COVID-19 hotspots, you have to go to self-isolation for 14 days. So these are, these are the kind of major topics uh, that, that have been going on in, in markets the last few days. Um, the good news is that the wider upward trend in the FTSE 100, as you can see here, is still very much intact. Draw a line here, it's, it, it, this trend line here, we're still just about above that, so the market is still pushing higher. If you do look to press on higher from here, we could be looking at, at retesting uh, the highs of the week, um, you know, in around 6,340-odd, 42. And if you go beyond that, we could then be looking to, to test the highs of early June. Uh, and if you go beyond that, we could be targeting this red line here, the 200 moving average, and that comes into play at 6,776. Take a look at what's going on over on the, uh, on the DAX, the mature market. It's a fairly, fairly similar situation um, on the Euro market. We can see here, if we draw a line between the lows of March through the lows of mid-May, we get this trend line here. It's been, it's, we're just about above it. It's been on a few occasions. It's acted nicely as support. So while we hold above that line, and in fact, we're actually just about above the 20 moving average. So things are looking, are still looking in the DAX is still in its upward trend. If it can hold above the dirty moving average, and if it can hold above this trend line here, it's likely that the wider upward trend is going to continue. And should that be the case, we could be looking at heading back up towards the early June highs uh, of north of 12,930. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at heading back down towards, if we go beyond that, we could be heading towards the big psychological number of 13,000. And even if you do have a, a decent break to the downside, Support could come into play from this blue line here. The 50 moving average, it acts nicely as support uh, back in the first half of May. So we could see it act as support yet again. Take a look at what's going on with the S&P 500. The S&P 500 uh, is probably arguably in a bit better shape than, the, than its European counterparts, but only, only just. Similar scenario here, it's, in, it's been an upward trend for the last number of months. It's holding above this trend line here. It's holding above its its a uh, 200 moving average just about. And while it holds above uh, both both the trend line and the 200 moving average, it's likely that we could see further gains coming from here. Uh, and should that be the case, we could be looking at retesting the high seen uh, in early June in around 3,233. And if you go beyond that, we could then be looking heading towards 3,350. Uh, but even if you do move to the downside. Support could come into play, um, this, this yellow line here, which is the 100 moving average. It acted nicely as support uh, in the middle of June, so the possibility it could act as support again. And that comes into play at 2,922. Currency markets haven't been as interesting, hasn't been as exciting as the as the stock market have recently. One of the kind of common themes is that more recently the US dollar index in the US dollar has um, um, acted as a safe haven delay, which I'm not saying that's saying that has never happened before, but we think it's um it's been a bit unusual it's been a bit unusual recently in that regard. And so whenever we've seen stock markets tumble, we've often seen the US dollar get stronger and then vice versa whenever we've seen traders take on a bit more risk, stock markets push higher or rebound. Uh, from a sell-off, we then see kind of move to the downside recently in the greenback. So if you take a look at euro dollar, we can see here that euro dollar has had a nice upward trend of mid-May through kind of into, into kind of early June, early to mid-June. We've moved to the downside here. We found support in around one spot, 11.68. We bounced higher again, but notice how the highs of um, of late June failed to take out the highs of early to mid-June, so we could be looking at turning lower on ourselves yet again. <clears throat> if that is the case, and we do break below this area here, we could head back towards the trading moving average in around 110, spot 32. But if you can kind of hold above this, this zone here, the wider upper trend might come, come back into play, and we could be heading towards 114. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at heading towards the high scene in early March in around 114, spot, not, sorry, one spot, 1495. Taking a look at pound dollar, what's going on with pound versus the US dollar. As we can see here, similar scenario. It was um, basically from the middle from kind of the from the mid from the 9th or 10th of June onwards, 
pounds be pushing low because of a stronger dollar, and that's that, and that's that, that's tied in with the risk off sentiment. We have been moving lower for the last number of sessions. We're pretty much trading right on the 50-day moving average here. If you do look to get a press on lower, and if you take off the lows uh, early of, uh, of this week in at one spot, 23.35, you could then be opening up for heading back down towards the late, the late, the late uh, main low in at this area here. Um, in at, what is it? The curse has gone now. We could be looking heading back towards 121.63, and if you go below that, we could be heading back down towards 120. But you know, keep in mind, um, it, it's been in a relatively small range the last couple of days. It hasn't been, there's, there's been no clear direction, even though the last 10 days or so has been a clear direction. But it's the last couple of days have been a, been a bit kind of back and forth. So we can't discount the fact that we had a decent run between mid, mid to late May uh, and early June. So if we do look to press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the 20 moving average in at one spot, 26.84. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking heading towards the June highs in at one spot, 28.13. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking heading up towards 1.30. Um, what's interesting about the move in gold, what's interesting about the move in the US dollar is the move in gold. Um, so traditionally, gold has benefited whenever the stock markets have been in, 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 in risk-off mode, uh, and, that, and, that is, and that is still the case to an extent. But the problem is, gold is traded in US dollars, and if the dollar is getting stronger because traders are risk-off sentiment, that's almost like capping or cancelling out uh, the gains that we potentially see in gold. Nonetheless, uh, at the beginning of the week, or sorry, earlier in the week rather, uh, gold went on to hit its highest level uh, in over seven um, in over seven years. Seven and a half year high was reached was reached in gold, um, but what we can see the last number of sessions it has been trading in a relatively small range. Um, the upward trend is still very much in play. If you can hold above this blue line here, the 50-day moving average at 17.22, it's likely we're going to see further gains. If you take off the recent highs of just shy of 1780, that could put us on track for 1800 to be to be retested. Uh, lastly, I'll take a look at what's going on in the oil market. As we talked about, the reopening of the economy has led to uh, a rebound in manufacturing and services, which is going to prompt us, um, put, which has helped the oil market because it, it gives it gives way to the idea that um, demand is going to pick up for oil. Um, so, but with that, we've also with the kind of spike in cases and uncertainty, are we going to head back towards another kind of wave, second wave? Is there going to be a pause in, in the reopening of economies? That's been kind of impacting oil as well. So. Always been in a nice upward trend since uh, since, uh, since, uh, since uh, April, rather. rather. Solid upward trend since April. Only this week is making its highest level um, um, in, since March. Um, this, this, by the way, is Brent crude oil. Um, apologies, so I'll take a look. This, apologies. This is, um, this is WTI, rather. WTI, the August contract. Um, it's been a nice upward trend. Um, between between April and into into middle of June. In fact, this week it hit its highest level uh, since March. So over three month high was reached. It's in a solid upward trend. If you look to press on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting the lows of March in around forty two dollars and sixteen cents. Uh, they're the kind of major markets to keep an eye out for. In terms of the big events next week, um, the biggest one is going to be non farm perils, uh, which falls on thir Thursday the second. Of July, uh, because the U.S. is going to be ha having its um, bank holiday. Fourth of July celebrations will be held on Friday, the third of July. Uh, in relation to non-farm payrolls, that's going to be by far the biggest, um, it, um, the biggest update of the entire week. Keep in mind, uh, with last with last month's non-farm payroll update, um, they're expecting headline jobs reading to decline by about 7.7 7 or 8 million jobs we were expected to decline by. We actually had a rise, surprise rise of 2.5 million jobs. Um, in relation to the unemployment rate, the unemployment rate came in at 13.3%, but it's also stated there's a 3% margin of error, so it could be as high, it could be as, high you know, uh, as a 16.3%. So the jobless rate uh, in, in the US is going to be in, uh, in, in focus as well. Um, also, when next week, um, we're going to have the Fed minutes. At the last Fed meeting, the, the Federal Reserve uh, made it quite clear the interest rates are going to stay basically at zero or close to zero uh, until probably about 2022. Um, the Fed made it very clear uh, that they're going to do what it takes in terms of getting the economy back on track. Um, 
we also have the final reading of those June manufacturing uh, reports. Uh, at, at, at the top of the video, I mentioned the flash manufacturing numbers were, were very, po very positive. We have the final reading uh, from all the kind of major economies of the world. What else we have next week? We have the final reading of, of UK first quarter GDP, uh, German unemployment, Sainsbury's first quarter numbers, FedEx fourth quarter numbers, and finally, Constellation Brands. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, stay safe, have a good trading week, and good luck.